I Make Me Sick, the title, you know, the sick is S-I-C, which um, comes from Latin, so it was. Um, and, you know, sick is usually placed after a phrase in an essay when you're quoting someone and there's like a misspelling or a mistake in what you've cited in your standard English text. And so I was thinking about citing my own history and the ways in which um, I'm sort of slightly misquoting the things that I'm reperforming. The piece was made at a time when I was thinking a lot about my personal archive, my history as a performer, dancer, or interpreter for performance artists. I decided to kind of make the whole work about this doubling and kind of like um, how I've been a double for other people's artistic expression. And then by recombining those experiences, I can kind of create my own autobiography. Um, so I alternate between anecdotes and then reperforming excerpts of work. Introductions. A, B, C. A. Afterlife. Abbreviated. Approximate. Abrupt as an ending. Archive. As in, these are some of mine. Abramovich, Afam, Appropriate, Appropriate, Ask, Axe, Arch, Analog, Auntie Viola, Auntie Diotha, Auntie Model. Aunt Gracie. Answers, as in call and response. Animal. Amway. My parents worked for the Amway Corporation from 1980 to 2005. Amway is short for the American Way Association. It was originally conceived as a door-to-door -door sales business known for LOC, Liquid Organic Cleanser, SA8, Laundry Detergent, Satinique Shampoos, Neutralite Organic Vitamins, and Artistry, an original line of skincare products. Amway Corporation has developed over 450 original products with global manufacturing sites in China, India, and Washington State. It also has an online identity called Quickstar. In 2012, the company reported over 12 billion in profits and seven years of consecutive growth. Amway runs on the direct distributor model under the oversight of chairman Steve Van Andel. Amway's headquarters are located in Ada, Michigan. Direct distribution is a form of network marketing. Amway publishes a catalog of its products. As an employee, when you buy one of these products, Amway profits, but you make a commission. With each product you buy, you earn commission points, which accumulate as money in the form of a check at the end of every month. In order to increase your profits, you invite other people to join your business so you can distribute products down the line. Known as your downline, these people order products through you, which you order through Amway, which then come to your house, which then your downline picks up and takes home to their house. If your business is growing, then your downline has a downline that orders products through them, through you, from Amway, and so on and so forth, hence direct distribution, also known as a pyramid scheme. As more products flow through you to your downline, the more your business grows. The larger your monthly paycheck is, the higher you climb on the Amway ladder, from direct distributor to silver direct distributor, to gold direct distributor, to diamond direct distributor, to double diamond direct distributor status. Our basement was full of Amway products. My parents kept a surplus in case of supply chain issues. 
My sisters and I were strongly encouraged to use as many Amway brands at the same time in order to increase our family profits. These products were fine, and some were even good, but they were designed to be such close copies of popular brands that my adolescence was spent in a parallel universe, just one remove from the real thing, and I wore those bobo shoes into the ground. I had Amway jeans, sweatshirts, bathing suits, underwear, blazers, calculators, toys, stationery, pens, backpacks, soap, deodorant, shoes, boots, sandals, sunblock, an air freshener called Smells Be Gone. At birthday parties, I handed out Amma gift catalogs so my friends could order whatever their hearts desired through me, through my parents, through Amway. My sisters and I also freebased on truckloads of Amway snack foods like Yum Yum frozen yogurt pops, Honey O's cereal, perfect empowered drinking water, real grape fruit spread, meatless taco mix, and then washed these down with over 25 kinds of nutritious supplements such as vitamins A, B, B6, B12, C, E, omega-3, coenzyme Q10, and fish oil. Sometime in the mid-90s, during the era of peak Amway flow through our family, I would listen to Amway-endorsed cassettes of motivational speakers while being driven to Amway conventions where those same speakers would appear live before thousands of eager distributors. My favorite motivational speaker was Les Brown. You can find his speeches on YouTube. Sometimes I'd listen to Les Brown while being driven to dance class with my Amway moisturizer on. Auction, appetite, Arna, Arnie, ass man, association as in free. And your family's experience with Amway, had you kind of dealt with that part of yourself before in the work? I had never talked about my parents working for the Amway Corporation. Right. Our lives and everything we consume and wear become, sort of feed back into our profits as a family. And I was thinking, of course, about um, that as a parallel to how, how dance can or cannot be um, assigned similar values. A lot of my work is thinking through language and dance, right, and the transitions between the two in performance, how they communicate differently, how they can kind of undo each other or sort of um, create nice ambiguity and things around a kind of confessional experience like an autobiography on stage. B. Trisha Brown. Les Brown. Les Brown. Blues. Boldface Lies. Butterfly. Bondage. Beg, borrow, steal. Brisk, brusque, beast of burden, bougainvillea, 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 bougie, bro, bro, beach, bleach blonde, bleach bland, backspace, backspace, as in delete. I rehearsed with the Brian Brooks Dance Company for about six months. And what I'm about to show you is a dance that I never learned but watched being rehearsed while I sat in the corner.
Backspace. Backspace. Booty. Boo. Baldwin. Blackout drunk. Bareback bottoming. Bubble butt. Bubble 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 bubble. Butt magazine. Balloon. Built to burst. Bust. Busted. Bussing in Boston. C, collector. Count coin, chant, curse. Change as in no. Cigarette, citation, course dropped, call collect. Cursor, command X, command C. Miss Seeley, Chinese opera, Cunningham, Clueless, cute. Clotted cream, crinkle cut, crispy as in bacon, collaborator, Congress, I just can't. Introductions N, nope. Nope, no, nah. Nah, uh mais non, nada, nil, zilch. Nodding off, it's not a thing, as in Keon Gaskin. New Yorker, as in New Yorkers coming to LA and ruining it. I'm sorry. Mm, not sorry. Introductions, D-E-F, D, double, as in copy-paste, double as in some things happen twice. Double trouble, double dutch, delete, delete. Dickmatize, daddy isn't zaddy, dead, dog. Document the 13, dark, as in beatboxing in the dark. Dreamers, decisions, drenched in sweat. Detainment, exile. Exit, exhibition, Grandma Emma, Ego Waffle, Emoji, Echo, Empty, Escape, as an ESC, Extrasensory Perception, as an ESP, Fire, Fugitive, Fennel, Fred, Florence Joyner Kersey, AK Flojo, AK Fastest Women on Earth, for a time. Freddie Mae and Fannie Mac, fuck you, you fucking fucks. Fuck Me Harder from Miguel Gutierrez, Foreskin, French Kiss, Los Feliz, Los Feliz, Los Feelings, Fierce, Failure, fail better, feel better, I promise you. In 2010, I worked as an interpreter for a visual artist named Tino Segal, who was having a show at the Guggenheim Museum. Although my name did not appear anywhere, oh, hey, W for wins. Although my name did not appear anywhere in, the, in, in, the, in print, in the museum's materials, or on the museum's walls, I was definitely there. As an interpreter in this work, you were required to have a conversation with a museum visitor while you accompanied them up the spiral ramp. During the course of the walk, you would discuss the concept of progress with the visitor, and the conversation became the art. I had to become good at free associating about progress, happily talking to them about anything they wished to discuss except two things, the walk up the ramp itself and the lack of art on the walls. Before speaking with me, the museum visitor first meets a young child at the bottom of the spiral ramp, whose job it is to entice the visitor to enter the conversation. The child will start by introducing themselves, and then through a series of questions and statements, would form a contract and start the conversation. I'll demonstrate.
Hello. Hi. My name is Will. This is a work by Tino Segal. Would you like to follow me and have a conversation? Yeah? What's your name? Maliki. Maliki? Why don't you come this way? Do you wish there were umbrellas? Is it too sunny? What do you think? A little bit? Can I ask you a question? What is, what is progress? You want to take a walk and think about it? Yeah, working hard and improving and getting better at something. Are there things that you like to work on? After you. Is there something you're working on right now? What are you working on? Are you into magic? Did I hear that once? Yeah? What kind of magic do you like? What kind? Psychic stuff? Like, um, like ESP, kind of? Like extrasensory, like, like what, like um, telepathy? Are you practicing telepathy? Or you try but what? Doesn't work. What, how have you, have, whose mind have you been trying to read? What's that? Whoever you can, because there's limits. It's true. What do you think of these paintings? Really interesting, because this one person did a lot of work. Yeah, they put in a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. What did it make you think about? Seems like anyone could do, but they couldn't. What does it make you think about? You don't know. Me neither. Let's go this way. Do you paint? Not often. You're busy working on telepathy. Well, thanks for hanging out with me. Oops, there goes my show. So back then, at the Guggenheim, one of the people I spoke to on the ramp was Xavier Lois, who is a well-known French choreographer. And I asked him this question. This is 2010. We've just had this huge financial market meltdown, and there's been a lot of talk about banks, corporations, and other businesses that are too large to fail. By now, we all know what it is to be too large to fail. What is something that is too small to fail? He didn't answer me. Introductions, GH, Giselle, Grrr, Guggenheim, gun, as in this is not a gun. Grace, amazing grace, hallelujah. What do gay horses eat? Hello, hello, hey, hello, 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 hey, hello, hello. Hey, hey, hey. Hee hee. Introductions, K, KG, as in Kane Griffin. Killing me softly. Kept as in quiet as it's kept. Introductions, I. Insert. Inscribe. Internalize. Interspecies. Illness. Interjections. Injections. Immunize. Immunoboost. Impeach. I. Image. I am legend. We do end up in the last act of your time as a dancer on the Will Smith film, I am legend, which is, I believe, five years after a pandemic. 
He did this beautiful thing that time can do. The work takes on this completely other meaning in relation to body. With the pandemic, it's, there's, there has been such um, clear kind of like, um, like racialized fallout about who's getting sick and who's dying. Um, and this piece also is thinking through a lot about the sort of racialized nature of labor. Um, and so um, I've, in talking through working you know, as a performer, as a zombie, you know, kind of, which is already sort of like mm -hmm. a living dead figure. Um, I think that that kind of racialized, you know, labor and the illness kind of converge there and also feel like a, just a sort of echo of the present in a certain way. And I think we're working in a time when the museum and art space has kind of reignited an interest in performance. And so we're navigating the nature of our labor, the nature of representing our bodies and like um, inside of these spaces and what that how that relates to certain questions around value and sale, yeah. obviously an object and race and gender and all those like juicy things that need to be addressed. In 2006, I got a job in a Will Smith film as a zombie extra. The movie is about the world almost ending because a cure for cancer turns into a lethal viral strain which kills 90% of the people that it infects. The remaining 10% of the population who are infected mutate into predatory nocturnal mutants called dark seekers, who are extremely vulnerable to sunlight and other sources of UV light. The film starts three years after the outbreak, and we find US Army virologist, played by Will Smith, living an isolated life in the ruins of New York City. All of greater New York has been deserted, and Will Smith is unsure if any other uninfected humans are left in the world. I was hired for the gig, along with 25 other downtown dancers, and in September 2006, we attended zombie boot camp in the West Village. Every morning, we took Pilates and yoga, snacked on granola bars, Gatorade, Cheez-Its, and real cheese. Then we would move on to zombie breathing practice, which was learning how to flutter our diaphragms and undulate our spines to explore how it would look like to suffer from the virus. After zombie practice, we then spent the afternoon doing stunt training. Stunt training consisted of the stunt coordinator walking to the far end of the room, spinning around, pointing her finger at us, and she would say, OK, run at me at top speed. When I say bang, you have to fall down like you've been shot. She was from New Zealand. One month after zombie boot camp, my then collaborator, Kenneth Hawkins, and I decided to incorporate our zombie experiences into a performance. Around Halloween of 2006, there was a party at PS1 celebrating the 30th anniversary of its first major exhibition called Rooms. Somehow, Kenneth and I, known then as Dance Gang, or DG for short, made it onto the list of entertainers for the after party we had finally made headway in the art world. We painted our faces white and used the zombie sternum thing to create a dance practice called the Vomit Dance, which we performed to a packed gallery of really confused people. Emma, Emma. Emma, Emma. Hee <laughs> hee.